you gotta do is read a book Open up the cover and take a look Hi, my name is Mia And my name is Catherine And today we're gonna be reading a book named Rare Little Robots by Carolyn Creamy the cool September breeze blew down from the north. It drifted through the dark game forest, causing the animals there to burrow deep into their underground homes. It picked up leaves and gum wrappers as it whooshed across Skillington Avenue. It swept past the Boyle's house, the Hinkes house, and the Gilmore's house until it settled over a very last house on the corner number 1959. You might not pay too much attention to this old Victorian at first. Its front yard was ordinary though. The ordinary po porch swinged, creaked in the wind. Two ordinary pots of a yellow mom's welcomed guest. But if you walked around the backyard, you would see a shed with a sagging roof and a cracked window. An interesting shed. A sign brain and crayon was taped in the green door. Don't come in. I'm creating. And if you look through the window of the shed on that September afternoon, you'd see an 11-year-old girl named Penny Rose Mooney sitting on a rickety card table with more than a dozen items strewn across it. There were the usual helpful things like the hammer that was no bigger than a pencil, the wing nut and the screwdriver and the cigar box filled triple A batteries. Penny Rose especially loved the yellow metal tape measure that zipped back in the case with the tough of a touch of a button. But most fascinating of all were the little robots that Penny Rose had created of the bits and pieces that she found on her treasure walks. She had made them with odd items that pleased her like a meat thermometer, a cell phone, a calculator, and a pair of old dentures. One robot had a marble eye that Penny Rose had found in the town graveyard. Today was Penny Rose's birthday. There would be a cake that night, pres presents, a few balloons. If you listened very carefully, you'd hear her talking to the robots about it. I think having a birthday party with just your parents and your cat is fine. I really do, she told them. And I have you guys. You're my friends. She didn't like the way her voice trembled when she said that last part. So she did that sh what she always did when she worried or became upset. She tightened another screw. She loosened a bolt and she changed the battery. The wind blew across her neck. She shivered and pulled the hood up on her sweatshirt. Why is it so cold all of a sudden? The robots didn't answer. And maybe it was the force of her determination or a few stray whiskers from her cat, Arvid, or the northerly wind blowing in through the window that changed every single item in the shed on that pool. September afternoon, or maybe it was simply a desperate wish from a lonely girl. Chapter 1 The next morning, after a quick visit to the shed, Penny Rose joined her parents at the kitchen table for breakfast. Every Sunday morning, since they had moved, her, fa her father made pancakes in the shape of insects. He was an entomologist, so he pretty much thought about insects all day. Penny Rose didn't have the heart to tell him that she hated his pancakes. He was trying very hard to be the family cook now. The mom was busy with her new job at the bank. Besides, Penny Rose liked guessing what the shapes were. Mom sat at the kitchen table with the lumpy look on the pancakes on her plate. She had taken exactly one bite. She looked up when Penny Rose came in and shook her head ever so slightly. Penny Rose knew what that meant. Another perfectly good batch of pancake batter ruined. He had probably added something gourmet, like rhubarb or olives. He never seemed to be able to leave pancakes batter alone. Dad slid another lumpy looking one onto her plate and set it before her. Happy day after your birthday, he said. 
I thought I'd make an especially challenging pancake today. See what you think. Penny Rose stared at the blob of pancake. Bumblebee? She asked. She tossed her piece to Arvid, who was the only one who loved Dad's pancakes. Dad shook his head and turned back to the stove. Nope. Guess again. Oh, I bet it's a beetle. She said they had just had a long discussion one day before about beetles. Ding, ding, ding. You are correct. Now eat your beetle. He sat down at the table, smiled at her, and took a bite of his own beetle pancake. He was lanky like Penny, like Penny Rose, and had the same black hair and green eyes. He was almost the opposite version of her mother, who had straight blonde hair and a stocky build. I know you wanted a small birthday party with just us last night, Mom said, but since we have leftover cake, I thought it might be nice to invite Lark over tonight to help us polish it off. Penny Roses took a tentative bite of her beetle pancake, which had something odd and crunchy in it. Peanuts? Crackers? She wasn't sure. I said hello to her three times and she hasn't said one word back to me. Penny Rose said, maybe she's shy, Mom said. Or maybe she didn't hear you, Dad said. Or maybe she doesn't want to be my friend, Penny Rose said. Staring down at her plate, Penny Rose and her parents had moved to Skillington Avenue 28 days ago. And she had been studying Lark Hinkle from her bedroom window ever since. Lark's house was on the opposite side of the street, in the middle of the block. Penny Rose had to crane her neck to get a good vantage point. She could often see Lark standing in her front yard, writing notes as she stared through binoculars at the treetops. Lark was utterly mysterious. She wore enormous sunglasses everywhere, even in their fifth grade classroom. Sometimes she carried a small metal box and Lark didn't seem to have any friends either it was so logical for her and Penny Rose to be friends but so far it hadn't happened besides it's not like I don't have any friends Penny Rose said I have the robots and Arvid and you guys she looked up her from her plate to see her parents giving her the concerned stare they gave her the concerned stare when she worked in her shed for long hours or when she talked about how the robots were her friends. They probably worried about other things too, like flesh eating viruses and alligators. But Penny Rose knew that approximately 97% of their worries had to do with her and how she was adjusting to the new neighborhood. Given that she didn't dare mention how when she went into the shed this morning, the air seemed different, like the cold breeze that had swept in the night before had stayed there, or how Squirrel with the black smudge on his tail had seemed to follow her as she walked from the house and then watched her from a tree branch the entire time she was in the shed. She was sure if she told them these things, the concerned stare will become their permanent expression. I think you should go over there and ring her doorbell, Mom said. And then just introduce yourself, Dad said. Ask her if she'd like to see the robots. I'll try, Penny Rose said. She took another bite of beetle pancakes. Great, Mom said. Dad smiled and nodded. First, though, Penny Rose would need a detailed plan. She went up to her bedroom, sat on her bed, and turned on the lamp she had made last year from an olive oil can. A stack of notebooks sat on her nightstand. Her new inventions notebook, her robot drawings and descriptions notebook, and her to-do list notebook. Her most sacred notebook, Conversation Starters, was at the bottom of the pile. She picked it up found a clean page and wrote a quick list of possible convers conversation starters. One, I think binoculars are fun. Lark seemed to like binoculars. Two, 
The sun seems strong today. Like often wear sun goop. First, that's your mind if the sun does indeed seem strong. Three, sunglasses are very wise. Like wear sunglasses. Four, do you like robots? It is unknown whether or not Lark likes robots, but it is probable that she doesn't since most people do. And five, yesterday was my birthday. Would you like some leftover cake? This seems like a good bet, unless she has allergies or is gluten free or vegan or something. Six, was it in the metal box? This might be too nosy, although if you're not going to carry something so mysterious, you should be prepared for questions. Penny Rose looked over her list. She considered what her father said about Lark not hearing her before. She decided she would speak loudly. Penny Rose tore out the page and tucked it in into the tool belt she wore in the case she happened upon interesting items for her robots. This is it, Arvid. She announced to the small orange cat curled up on her bedroom rug. This is the day I become friends with Lark Hinkle. Arvid did what he always did. When Penny Rose made important announcements, he yawned. Okay, that's the end of the first part of the story. I hope you guys enjoyed that first part. And I really hope you guys read the rest of the story because it is really good. So, you yeah. should guys. You guys need to read this book. It's really interesting and really fun for you guys. So, <laughs> hope you enjoy it and hope you finish the book. All you gotta do is read a book. Open up the cover and take a look. All you gotta do is read a book. Open up the cover and